everybody welcome back to life to the max this is uncle max here and my sister mindy is doing a, another mindy moment this will be number mindy moment number three and this one was really cool a little bit longer but really informative uh we started looking at her onions and she has learned about and developed a technique for propagating onions that's just phenomenal she's able to get bigger onions get her own starts, her own sets, to the point where she's never had to grow onions for eight years. She, I mean, she hasn't had to go buy onions for eight years because she has them available to her. And so it's really cool. Wouldn't it be great to never have to worry about that? We talk about going to a store during the, the big rush after the pandemic and how there was none available. But then also, we also teach you a little bit about where to go when everyone else is going to the store, what other store to go to, to be able to have plenty available. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Even how to uh, salvage onions that you thought were going bad because they were in storage and they're starting to, to spoil, you think, or rot or, or go bad on you. But most of those can actually be resalvaged and repurposed and replanted and turn into onions again. And you think that they're bad. And now a normal person is going to throw them out. A better person was at least going to compost them. In this case, you now know that you can then save those. So that's a really good tip we're going to show you in there. Using companion planting, that's going to be our introduction to companion planting. How certain plants, uh, if they have a companion next to them, they benefit each other. There's beneficials and there's companions. And that's one of the reasons why I like Square Foot Gardening, which we'll show you in future segments. But really, really cool stuff there. Great planning for your garden. So that's some good stuff. Also using different types of containers to protect your plants so that you can plant them a little bit earlier and they don't... They don't die in frost. But why never to use green plastic or glass when growing? All these different non-hybrid tomato varieties. And there are some really cool tomatoes out there. Normal is everyone thinking tomatoes must be red. Carrots must be orange. Corn must be yellow. Potatoes must be white. We're going to show you some really cool stuff with heirlooms. Besides, it looks cool when you when you put it out on a feast and you've got your purple and your corn or your blue on a sausage corn, your purple potatoes and your purple or, or yellow uh, or red carrots with your orange ones. It, it makes it look really fancy and sophisticated, but it's also, yeah, it's just cool. Um, another great uh, Jim Phillips nugget in there. We're going to be talking a lot about Jim Phillips. Some good stuff there. A way to produce your own oils and healthy fats that you're going to need for your diet because you're going to be desperate for them. And, and how to get, actually get your own oils that you need. Also, the advantages of naturally occurring weeds in your area and the fact that most of them have medicinal uses. They're actually herbs that have medicinal purposes and benefits to them. So if you can start learning that, then you can stop putting weed feed on your lawn. Then you can start saving those medicinal plants and use them for herbs. And also, you can save your grass clippings and compost it, or better yet, mulch them right into the garden and never even save them. And your lawn's healthier and better that way anyway, and it takes less water. And there'll be a great little clip or link to a, a really good video on lawn care. That was done by Consumer Reports. So we'll, we'll share that with you. So hopefully you can enjoy it. Here it goes. Another Mindy moment, and she's gonna show us what she's done with getting her tomatoes started. And these are onion sets that you started, obviously. Right, well, they are, sort of. <laughs> I've left my onions in the ground for years if they aren't big enough. And then next- Oh, because they just keep getting bigger each yeah, year. So next year they'll actually split and make two. And so I end up with a patch of onions, like solid pack of, patch of onions, you know? that I have to dig out and, and then I separate them out and then I spread them out. And so onions, they're usually going to be done by in the middle of June, end of June, okay. because they have that uh, summer equinox is their, usually their time. And, and so do they, they automatically wilt down and let you know? The tops, yeah, the tops start tipping over about then. Okay. So, so that's start, a natural indicator yes, when the harvest so if you just leave some onions in the ground, you'll have natural onion sets. And, and but they're, they're actually called something else when they're alive sets or the little dried out things. And yeah. it take a while to get going. But these are onion starts, and so they're already going, and you don't have to wait for that period, and so they have a bigger head start. Okay. And so um, now, did you buy these as as starts, or did you just I, create them because you happen to have them? I started a few years ago with some sets, and then they just didn't do very well. Like I thought they didn't do that well because they took so long to get going. I started them late. You really should start them in the fall, you know, or something. Because like they're that. a bulb, just like exactly. You know, tulips and, and so stuff. I left them in the ground, and I discovered this whole life cycle that has been fantastic. So if I leave an onion in the ground, the second year it'll set seed at the top. Um, if it's big enough, it'll set seed at the top. And then that top is your onion sets. They're little miniature onions with a green top. They look like exactly a minute. So you've got your big, big onion. Then on the top, you've got a little set of, it starts out with little seeds, it's seedlings, and they turn into little sets. And then there, there's little green tops coming out of all those. And so each one, I just take those off and I plant those. And then uh, those ones are ready to be these the next year. So they'll grow in so, that year. And so when do you harvest them and then what do you do in between that harvesting them and planting? So the big ones I harvest 
you know, when their tops fall down. Okay. But these guys, they, their tops don't fall down because they're not that big. And so anyway, those just stay in the ground. So I, when I see the next year that I've got one of those little seed heads, and when they've turned into little onions and they have little teeny greens on top of them all, then I just break them off. And, and immediately put them back in the ground? Put them right back in the ground. Okay, so that yeah. there's no downtime, you don't nope. have to storm or prep so them? So I haven't bought any onion sets for eight years or more. Oh, really? Yeah, these are all... I, I mean, I <laughs> so you, really, you've never had them. to buy onions for nope, eight years? not anymore, because we just have so many that come up. Now, so, isn't that a better way to live life, folks, is to <laughs> never have to buy a vegetable again because you have tons of it? It's just and it keeps perpetuating, and yeah. you don't have to panic when you go to the store. And when I went, there was not a single potato, not oh, a single yeah. onion. Yep. Except when you go to the restaurant supply store, which you know where to go or nobody else does, and then they had tons they of it. Plenty. <laughs> so, so we'll be sharing that with another then, segment. We'll put a link If you in. have onions in your storage and you bought 50 pounds and you go through them all, then you start having some that get that get sprouts on them. And they start, they start going bad. Your onions will start going bad if, you know, if you bought 50 pounds of onions. You don't go through them all. Possibly. Oh, okay, okay. So some of those start to go bad. What happens is they're old, and so they start going, some of those will start growing. Okay. And you get sprouts out of those, and you just have to peel off the wet outsides, and the center part isn't ready to go onion, and you just put them out again, okay. and that becomes your onions. So the, the ones that you would think were rotten and, and people normally throw away, I would think, well, let's at least compost them. You're saying, they no, will. you just if refresh you them sprouts, and put them back in. and sprouts, yep. Okay. I mean, some of them just turn to complete mush, but um, some of them... But you could salvage... So what I'm doing here is... These tomato plants are going to take over this space, right? Yeah. Um, we're in May, and they're going to take over by June. And so just at the time when these are done, these, these plants are going to start yeah, taking over that perfect. spot. So I wouldn't want perfect. to put anything else that's a fall harvest. So I put the onions in front of these, and it does kind of help, I think, with bugs and things, too. They're a good companion plant. I looked it up to make sure, you know, when I did it, and made sure that they would, they would like each other. So anyway, this bed is really good because it's south-facing. Um, so it heats up really early in the year so it's a really good one for doing early stuff and late stuff so i put these in like early in mid-april um before you're supposed to in our area it, the last frost is may 15th and they say don't plant off the mother's day but the nice thing is is this holds the heat heats up quick and then i've got i can put a blanket over these or i've got yeah, two yeah. little greenhouse um bottles that i made out of the five gallons so i started those two the first and i covered those at night with the yeah and that's another way of repurposing uh these water bottles i had like 15 and a few of them started to develop cracks in them because you use them a lot and you could cut the bottom off and they become a little mini greenhouse for yeah your... and i don't you wouldn't want to keep them on too long because i don't know about the uv if you can get the uv through them but it's perfect for overnight because they can vent and they wouldn't get yeah. too much moisture um but it's still warm enough that it kept them through the cold a couple of the cold nights these two were out first hey hey let me Really? Oh my gosh, three planes are right after That's each other true. in an area where they're... Now, this is a quick little thing. I'll try to say it fast. Uh, here's the funniest thing. When people have greenhouses, uh, normal people will think, well, I've got to have a greenhouse. Well, they get the, the, the house and they will put green glass in it. Oh. <laughs> now, what... If you understand anything about color and reflectivity, what is that absorbing? What color is that absorbing? Everything but? Everything but green. Yep. So when you put green <laughs> over it, you're blocking or providing the, the only thing that it will not use yeah. <laughs> and therefore it does not work very well so if you see green. these wall of waters yeah. you know sometimes those were made that's green right. they are. and why would you put green over <laughs> that's what normal is so add this to normal normal people think that green and wall of waters are what you need for a greenhouse so that's funny so okay. anyhow but yeah one. repurpose those and some people have used even no uh, milk jugs right hold on some people have some people use old milk jugs, right? Haven't they done for the same purpose? The gallon ones or what? Yeah, just cut out the bottoms and put them over. I think I've seen that, yeah. But uh, but you have a whole bunch of different varieties. Yes, and these were I found at a nursery for 99 cents. And they have thick stocks and they're all heirloom, so I can save this. Oh, they thing. are? These are heirloom, yeah. Really? Yeah. And this old to... German last year, they yeah. had tomatoes that people thought were a miniature pumpkin. They're like, oh, that's a cute oh, pumpkin. Oh, serious? Like, well, that's a tomato. That big? They were huge, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. They were probably like this big, and people thought, Holy it, was, moly. People thought it was a pumpkin. Oh, the, we had a friend that at one point made, had like 100 different varieties. Right. So what do you have starts in these? Um, just all sorts of things. <laughs> Flowers, vegetables, and... Are you just repurposing a tray that you've had before and make your own, or? Um, yeah, you I buy just, these as starts. No, I just had planted. I bought these as this year as chrysanthemums, and I, once I planted those, then I put uh, these were up potted from tiny things. So I'm up potting all these two a little bit bigger. So there's peppers in there, and nasturtiums, um, cucumbers, and then that whole tray sunflower seeds. This sunflower started, yeah. So I didn't. You know, how many I sunflower plants are you gonna have? Um, I'm gonna do lizard mammoth. I'm gonna do them along a property line. That so how many are we talking? I planted four across. 
Uh, so I don't know. Bye. Whatever I don't use, I can eat as a sunflower sprout. <laughs> so I've just planted every, you know, every inch or so across this. So you might get the 30 or 40. Yeah. I'll have a lot. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just going to find little spots in my yard. That's something that Jim Phillips uh, taught us that, that uh, oils are going to be high demand. Exactly. That's, People are going to need oils, that's and my if you can, for oils if anything happens. If you plant a ton of sunflower seeds, you'll be able to fill your your craving for, yeah. for natural oil. And there's a little nut um, oil expresser that you can get, so you can actually um, express the oil out of the sunflower seeds and small nuts and seeds. You get oil out of them, so it's wow. a hand crank thing. Uh -huh. um, but that was on my well, that's on my wish list. <laughs> if you remember what that was, send us a link, and maybe yep. we'll uh, we'll see if we can't find a supplier who'll yep. work out a deal, get some kind of promo code. Or, at least yeah. a military first responder discount. Yeah, these are just, I just wanted to put them out a little bit to get a little bit of fresh movement up there. And, uh, it's not too sunny today, so yeah. they don't be fresh. Well, the beauty about weeding your yard is that half of them are medicinal herbs that have benefits. I know. People look at my yard and they're like, oh, you got a lot of things. I'm like, yes, please don't step on my mallow. That's right. You know, that's good stuff. Well, you don't put weed and feed on it, stone, then, kidney stones, then you yeah. can salvage that. And by the way, you don't want to put weed and feed and then save your grass clippings. And sure. you don't want to put them in the compost and you're composting and all that, yeah, that chemical. chemical. <laughs> And uh, another thing is the the grass does better when you mulch it. Yeah. I just found a great little segment on uh, lawnmowers or lawns. The uh, Consumer Reports has a show and Consumer 101 and they did a little segment. I'll try to put a link to it and talks a lot about how to have the best drink. All right, everybody. Hope you like that. There's some cool stuff there. And uh, yeah, you can check out that link. Hopefully there's a couple links there. Some really cool things there. Hopefully it's enjoyable. Another mini moment. Number three, we'll call it. And until next time, Max out.